the entire snow crab in a bowl of ramyun. Oh, what a, what a genius idea. That is so much meat, it's unbelievable. Hey everyone, it's Mark Weens. I'm in Sokcho, South Korea. And today we're going on a food tour to eat some of the most iconic Korean foods. It smells unbelievable. Wow, it is a whole squid stuffed. Mm. People will travel from Seoul and around the country here just to eat what they serve, boiling down ox bones to create a broth, the most unique and delicious Korean foods. Foods that you don't want to miss when you come here. Sokcho is known for its seafood, and I mean, that's really the reason I wanted to come here. We're beginning this food tour at the Central Tourist Market, where some of the Korean street foods here are not seafood at all. And they're one of the most popular things to eat in all of Sokcho. Nice, this market is full of all sorts of things, from street food snacks to fresh, raw ingredients. So it's all, I mean, walking streets here, and we are now going down one of the main alleys of the market. Oh, I love it. Really clean, really open, fresh. Look at the vibrant seafood. Wow, look at those fish. As soon as we enter this alley in the market, you could just see why it's known as one of the seafood capitals. Oh man, there's so many fresh, vibrant seafood. Lots of fish shrimp, squid. Oh, and now we're starting to see some of the prized seafood of Sokcho. This is the place? Yeah. Yeah, it does look like a lab. Here we are, we found it. It is white and bright, almost to the point where you need sunglasses. But from what I understand, people will travel from Seoul and around the country here just to eat what they serve right here in Sokcho. Wow, that's straight up a science laboratory in there. And we're kind of passing through the backside. Oh, okay, here's the front, here's the front entrance. The storefront, oh, with a line, with a queue. Oh, look at there, they've got a full conveyor belt production line. I thought it was almost kind of quiet from the other side, but that's because we were on the, the opposite side. This is the view from the storefront with the cashier where you buy it. So they're straight up boxed and ready to go. Yeah. There it is, that's what we came for. Let's open the, the gift. It is a straight up gift. Ready for the reveal here? Let's see, open it up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not a reveal. <laughs> Let's open it up again. Wow, fancy packaging. Here we go. I think this might be the real reveal. Let's go. There it is. Wow. This is one of the most popular things to eat in all of Sokcho. Fried chicken. Nuggets of fried chicken in this sweet sticky sauce with almonds with green chilies. It smells really good and served in a Christmas gift box. Let's try it out. Wow, it's sticky. Sauce is really sticky. Oh, wow, that's tasty. Mmm. Okay, it is sweet, definitely sweet. But it has this incredible saltiness. The sauce is so sticky, and I think it's so garlicky. That's like strip garlic fried chicken. Mmm. And even though it's cold, or room temperature, and Sort of the sauce has absorbed into this crispy breading, which kind of seems ironic for fried chicken. That actually is part of the, the attraction. It just absorbs that sauce into that crispy batter. I mean, it's straight up these boneless chicken nuggets that have, again, that Korean addictive combination sauce of sweet, salty, and a hint of spiciness. Good little chicken box takeaway. Um, and again, cold fried chicken. That's the way it's served. Okay, we're moving on. There's some more street food snacks that we gotta try here before we then move on for the seafood meal. Whoa, is this one supersized? Oh yeah, this is normal size. Oh, okay, so these are not the same thing. It's different, okay. <laughs> wow, this stall is extremely bright, uh, but they specialize in all sorts of deep fried snacks as well as pancakes. And something that this market is also famous for is a potato pancake. So she's gonna make one fresh for us right now. Apparently these ones frying were not the potato pancakes. 
That giant one, that is the potato pancake that we ordered. Whoa, look at the size of that spatula. It's huge. It's a specific spatula made just for the potato pancake. Oh, beautiful flip. Nicely done. It's so big, it makes a thud when she flips it over. Oh, and it, oh, it gets folded and patted down. Oh, nice. Oh, come to Madan. Originally, we were gonna just take it to go and eat it on the, on the walkway, but they have a nice dining room, so we decided to sit down, because this is quite, a, quite an obstacle to be able to eat while, while standing up, while holding. It's huge, and this region is known for its potatoes. That straight up smells like a hash brown. Grab a, grab a bite with your chopsticks, and then there's a couple of different sauces to choose from. Oh, it's really sticky. Ooh, and really hot. You can feel how sticky it is too. I'll go with the onion sauce. Mmm. It's straight up as a hash brown. This is more of a finer, stickier texture and more of a almost gooey, gooiness to it. Mmm. Really tasty. Uh, fried with oil so that it crispifies on the edges. Let's try the other chili sauce. Really hearty, really thick and filling. And if you look at it really closely, you can see actually the, the shreds of potato, but they're really fine. Look at the very like almost noodle threads of potato. Maybe some potato starch in here too to make it so gooey. Otherwise, I'm not sure how they could make it so gooey, so glutinous. And definitely with that sauce, that makes it great with that crunch of onion as well. Mm hmm. By far the biggest potato hash brown I've ever had. And something I get at again is very popular in Tokcho. It's tasty. Mmm. They definitely make this a family sized pancake. Mmm. And there's still one more thing we have to eat before we go to eat the crabs. And this is another extremely popular food item that people come to Sokcho just to eat. And we got off one of the alleys from the main market, and this is the place we're coming to try it out. Check out these jacuzzi-sized pots. Whoa. This is the ox bone broth. Wow. So on the outside of the restaurant, you'll see that they have these literally jacuzzi-sized tubs just boiling away with this incredible meaty aroma. And actually, the owner just mentioned that she's boiling down ox bones to create a broth. But the dish that you come to eat here is and I think they combine it with the broth in some orders or some of the dishes that you can order. But the actual dish that you come here uh, is if you've heard of sundae. Sundae is the Korean blood sausage, which they have on their menu too. Um, and it includes blood, it includes uh, sometimes rice or noodles, which are stuffed into the intestines and then steamed or boiled to create a blood sausage, Korean blood sausage. But in Sokcho, one of the most popular uh, things to eat is, is a squid sundae. So it, is a similar process, but instead of using intestines, instead of using blood, it's a squid, which all the ingredients and things are stuffed into a squid. Then, uh, so the squid acts as the exterior wrapper of the sausage, and then it's sliced into pieces, fried in egg. And so we'll get a combination of both, plus blood sausage, plus there's no way we can leave out without trying this ox bone soup. Okay, wow. The first thing that's come before the squid sundae is the boiling soup. That ox broth with, mixed with ox organs, uh, mixed with their sundae on the bottom there, and just that milky, 
bone broth. Comes so hot, boiling in the earthenware bowl. We gotta just taste that, that milky broth first. Oh, it's so hot. Mm. Oh man, all the flavor has come out of those bones. It's literally creamy, creamy, milky. Yeah, it has a strong oxy beefiness to it as well. Oh man, really good. And then there is some kind of a, a seasoning in there, some kind of a seed in there that's also giving us a flavor, plus some sliced up leeks as well. But you are intended to, to season it with more chili pepper paste. And if you want it saltier, you can add some of the fermented shrimp as well. Okay, let me add some of the pepper paste. Stir that around. And here comes the, oh, come some Oh, nice. Oh, okay, those are the dipping sauces. Oh, nice. Oh, the squid sundae comes on a sizzling skillet. Oh, that's beautiful. It is a whole squid stuffed, fried, egg battered, and on a sizzling platter. Okay, let's try again. Wow, that's hot. That is definitely extremely meaty, really good. All of the ox parts just melt in your mouth. I'm gonna go in for the squid sundae. What a fantastic, brilliant idea. You can see the squid is the exterior, it's the wrapper of the sausage, stuffed with rice, stuffed with maybe scallions and some other things. So you take this bite. Mm. Oh, it's good. And then you taste with some of the pollock. This is some of the pickled pollock fish. And this is the chaser of choice that comes together with it. Oh. Mm. Well, that has a sourness to it. Tastes like candied soured fish dried. Whoa, that just bumps up the flavor. Squid tuna is delicious though. It's like a full meal wrapped within a squid. Oh man. The squid itself is so tender as well, not rubbery at all. I'm moving back over to the ox. You want to put some rice in your bowl, then pick some of the ox soup. It's literally melted ox organs and bones with some of that broth to create almost an ox porridge. I'm gonna add in some more of that pepper paste. Plus I think definitely add in those fresh green chilies. Add in some more broth. Okay. And you've got a kind of a congee, an ox congee here. Mm-hmm. Oh, with those green chilies. And then chase it with some of the radish kimchi. Mm -hmm. That one has a stickier sauce to it. Almost like a, like a jam. It's almost like a radish jam kimchi. Oh man. Mm-hmm. It goes great together. Within all the ox organs, you have all sorts of different parts. Some bits are kind of gooey and sticky. Some pieces melt in your mouth. Other pieces have this cartilage crunch to it. Actually, I almost forgot about the the actual sundae, the actual blood sausage, which is in the soup as well. And this is the real blood sausage. I think it's, rather than rice, I think it's noodles in there. And you can see scallions, it's kind of like have exploded from the wrapper. Mm. Mm. Oh man, that's good. Oh, it has a, a unique herbaceous aroma to it. Almost tastes like caraway or some kind of a spice to it. Oh man, it's extremely tasty. Oh. Going back into the squid sundae. This is really, really something special. Mm. I mean, it's just such a wonderful, natural thing to do with squid. Stuff it with even more deliciousness. Man, this is the type of dish that will just warm you all the way into your stomach, into your soul. Mm. Along this entire alley, there's probably a dozen different restaurants that sell exactly the same thing, sundae with the oxbone broth. But the particular place that we went to is called Chanto Sundeguk and highly recommended. They're really friendly. Okay, from here we are continuing on to the seafood meal.
about a 10 minute drive away is the next market. And this market is known for its red snow crabs, especially the east coast of Korea. You'll find tons and tons of red snow crabs, one of the prizes of the sea. And as you can see up there, this cluster is known for their seafood and especially their crabs. So we're gonna walk around, we're gonna see some of the market, and then we are definitely gonna try some crab. He's finding us three of the best Sokcho snow crabs. So we're gonna have the full Sokcho red snow crab meal and they're gonna make three different crabs, three different ways, I think. We'll, we'll have to see how they prepare them. We're getting a whole basket full of seafood. He's got some sea squirts, some octopus, some clams, some abalone. It goes right into the seafood cleaning room. Oh, we're eating a lot of sea squirts today. Oh, there's one of those guys, a sea hot dog. <laughs> oh, immediately into the steaming containers. Oh, there's, so there's three snow crabs and one of the, the white crabs. Okay, and that's the steamer right there. Wow, that's fast, straight from the tank, straight to the steamer on the sidewalk right here. Oh, the nakti tang tang. Yeah. <laughs> Fresh octopus, sesame seeds. Oh, ready yeah. to go. Oh, the abalone. Chongbo. Oh, okay, gum. Chongbo. Chongbo. Yeah. Fresh abalone, as fresh as it gets. And I think we'll be eating the, the abalone raw. Oh, the sea. Oh, yes. There's a lot of juice that comes out of it and makes sashimi and then the sea squirts. Oh yeah, the sea squirts are always a unique creation as well. Oh, that whole little raw seafood platter is ready. The crab needs to steam for about 15 minutes. In the meantime, we have all their fresh seasonal seafood that they, it's kind of like chef's choice because it's all whatever's in season for the moment, what they have in the tank that they'll give you kind of as appetizers, kind of as side dishes. So that included the nakji, which is the, the chopped up fresh octopus. That included the sea hot dogs, the sea squirts, abalone. And then they also gave us this amazing dish, which is actually looks kind of like frozen raw fish sliced really thin. And it looks like ice. It actually looks kind of like a seafood bingsu. And I think we should begin with this because this is the most unique dish out of all of them. We've tried all of these other other seafoods and they're all just like pure seafoods. This one is actually like a straight up seafood bingsu. Yeah. Oh, so there's raw fish on top and then you mix the whole thing up. It is straight up ice. Whoa, this is a unique one. Totally different from anything I've seen. Ah, in this area, it's mostly popular, or is it popular across I'd say maybe Korea? In the East Coast, maybe? Okay, especially yeah. on the east coast of Korea, maybe. Okay, let's let's give this a try. Wow. Whoa, it's cold. <laughs> wow. That is a straight up seafood slushy. Yeah, it's so cold. We will like, yeah, we'll give you a brain freeze if you take big, too big of a bite. Even the fish on top is kind of frozen, so it makes it really easy to chew. And then it's actually kind of sweet and spicy and you taste the sesame. So it is like a frozen gochujang pepper paste mixture with that slices of raw fish. That kind of goes up your nose a little bit. That is unique and icy. Okay, let's try some of the other. Time for the sea squirt. I gotta admit, the sea squirt is not my favorite item from the sea. They're just so briny, so salty, but we gotta give it a try every time we have, a, have the opportunity. Wow. Oh, that one is like, you almost feel this ammonia coming out of it. Almost goes up your brain a little bit. Really tender though. No doubt that's the most seafoody thing you'll ever taste. Plus this bitterness to it. That's definitely an advanced seafood. I'm gonna add some soy sauce to the, the wasabi. Fresh abalone. 
Oh man, that oh man, that sea squirt was that was intense. It has this bitterness to it, but as soon as you finish eating it, that bite, it leaves this coats your mouth in this sweetness. It's really a unique thing to eat. That's without a doubt something that everyone should try at least once. Okay, here we go. The abalone. Wow. Oh, that is. Oh man, that's good. It is so crisp. Abalone is literally feels like cartilage in your mouth. Oh, that's spectacular. Okay, time for the sea hot dog. A little strand. Whoa, it slides up the chopsticks. <laughs> this one, this one also needs a full submerge. Plenty of wasabi. I mean, taste is kind of neutral compared to the sea square. Has a sweetness to it. More of this like gummy, gooey texture, chewiness, leatheriness to it. Man, that, that raw seafood samplers platter right there, that's just like all three totally different textures, totally different flavors. Try this raw slices of fish. Oh, wow. Oh, that's outstanding. That fish is straight butter. Oh, man, not chewy at all. Melts in your mouth. Outstanding. Okay, and then we have the nakji. This is the octopus. Again, a really chewy texture. Sprinkle with some sesame seeds, that's all. Actually, sometimes they put uh, sprinkle sesame oil on it. This one has no sesame oil, it's just pure. Out of all of the seafoods, I gotta give it up for the abalone. That's probably the prize of the, the raw seafoods today. Okay. Oh, they serve it to you whole like that, okay. And what he's doing is he's taking all those legs and he's just taking the knife and just slicing down that shell. Look how, that's how soft the shell is. He could just slice that knife. of it. Beautiful. Oh, it's going into steam again. So we're gonna go back to the table and it should be ready very soon. So we've got the whole crab sculpture here. We also have just the whole crab, which he's gonna show us how to cut up and eat first. Okay. Yeah. So scissors, and again, that shell is so soft. Cuts off one of the legs. Oh, that's the claw actually. Oh, and that just pops out. The meat just pops out. Oh, nice. Oh, revealing that beautiful crab meat on the inside. Oh, he pulled it through, he pushed it through. That's like a crab straw. Just push the meat through. The juices come out the side. <laughs> Pull apart the head, the juice, the tamale. Oh, and it's full of meat too. All that roe is what you want to eat. Okay, what a pro, yeah. He completely dissects that crab in a minute. Man, he is an absolute snow crab pro. He dismantles your entire crab within a minute. 
and shows you how to even some tricks about eating it using all natural utensils, using its own shell as the utensil. It creates such a beautiful display. It's like a symmetrical wheel, a crab sculpture. And I love the color, the orange red color. So I think we just have to start with one of those. Actually, where were those ones that he kind of scooped out as those little, well, anyways, here's one of the ones that he poked through using its own shell. It's kind of like one of those pop ice when you poke that stick through the, the ice and keep popping it up, except crab. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, it's so juicy too and such a silky texture. That is outstanding flavor. That's why this is the quintessential meal of Sok Cho. That is one of the silkiest textured crabs you'll ever have. So silky, buttery, just melts in your mouth. And when I asked him what sauce to use, he said, no sauce. All you wanna do with the crab is eat it straight or dip it into the head juice. Okay, and you can keep on pushing it all the way through to get everything. Wow, that's fantastic. It's not overly briny or salty at all. Just straight sweet. Okay, I'm gonna grab one of those legs and do the other technique that he did. So using the, the tip of the claw, you can then scoop it, scoop it and just grab it all using the, the tip, bunch it all up, oh, until you get the whole, dip it into the juice, the tamale. Wow, that is truly extraordinary. And the crab itself is really light, really fluffy, not too rich. Move in to try that claw. And when you dip it into the tamale, that, that row head butter gives it a little bit of a more complexity, like a little bit of a bitterness. Mm. Oh man. That is so just sweet, almost syrupy sweet. It's so sweet, naturally. And the claw, as usual, has a different texture, more fibrous, more stringy, but still really tender, really juicy. Man, that's tasty. I think one of the things about this crab is it's so, the shell is so tender. You can just hand break it. So convenient, massive scallop, huge meaty scallop. Oh man. Oh, it just splattered me in the face. Oh man, that's sweet as well. So sweet and meaty. Oh man, that's good. That melts in your mouth. I might dip a little bit more into the other half into the wasabi though. Wow, those are some of the juiciest scallops ever. I mean, I think what's good about this seafood restaurant is that they serve what's fresh, what's seasonal, what's local. And I mean, that is what they truly do best. Tip the head, and there's one more piece of the crab that we haven't tried yet, the body section with the meat, with the roe on the inside. Again, it's so juicy and it's amazing how the shell is just almost like plastic. It's just so soft. Oh, he did slice it. Oh man, incredibly stringy, incredibly juicy. The texture, and you've got a little bit of that roe mixed in, which gives it a, just a hint of this, this like complexity, condensed crab flavor. It is an incredible crab. Let's try one of these. Mmm, sweet. A little spicy finish. Okay, so we're gonna finish off the crab. Pop this all in your mouth. And in the meantime, with all the remainder tamale from the head, they whisk the heads off into the kitchen. They're gonna make a bibim, a fried rice with the crab head juiced butter. Bring it back to the table. That body section is really good too. Again, all the different textures from the different body parts of the crab. There it is, the hedge. It's absolute crab happiness. So it comes back from the kitchen, 
crab roe head butter juices all fried up within fried rice, stuffed back into the shell. You can see some seaweed in there on there topped with sesame seeds. And you can see it's, it's actually a little bit pink from all of that. Just like sauces, juices are never wasted in Korea. Oh, it smells so good. The aroma of the crab. Mm. Mm. What a fantastic use of the crab juice. Because it, it's not overpowering, it just absorbs into the rice, giving it that flavor and aroma. Mm. And the richness. Oh, and I want to taste that with kimchi. Mm. All coming together in your mouth with the crispness of the cabbage, the chili. And another move we have to do, just pour on, pour on the entire bowl of kimchi. Mix it into the head. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Happiness. Oh, man. I thought we had already reached the pinnacle of crab, but they took it to the next level. A whole snow crab. It's a smaller snow crab, but the entire snow crab in a bowl of ramyun. This is another one of their specialties right here. Oh, what a genius idea. That broth, the aroma, all of the shell boiled in the soup, the noodles. Oh, what a, what a genius idea. <laughs> this is straight up next level. Oh, and that means all of the head juices have seeped into that broth. Let's just try that broth first. Oh, wow. Salty, sweet from the crab. Mm. The sesame seeds. Oh man, that's good. Okay. Some of those noodles. Mm. Mm-hmm. Springy, slightly chewy. Some bean sprouts in there. One another, just totally awesome usage of the snow crab. Yeah, mama. Oh. <laughs> and you can never have enough so snow crab. Oh man. Oh, when it's in that soup, it just absorbs all of that broth. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, okay. I thought the rice was a grand finale, and that is a grand finale, but the ramen is an absolute must to finish off your meal. Absolutely a quintessential experience, especially in Sokcho, especially on the eastern coast of Korea. The red snow crab is a prized delicacy, and it's been everything that I ho had hoped for and more. I honestly had no idea what to expect, uh, but that turned into a gourmet thrilling, straight up chef's table, red snow crab meal experience. Oh, what a meal. Some people might come to Sokcho for that fried chicken, but I can guarantee you, I'll be coming back for the red snow crab. And that was by far the highlight. That, it's so good. Everything about that restaurant, the experience was so good. Straight up gourmet. And from here, actually, we continue on with this ultimate Korean road trip. We're heading back to Seoul. And that's actually gonna complete our entire trip. We did an entire circle around the entire South Korean peninsula for some of the most unique, some of the greatest Korean food. So make sure you watch this entire series. It's been a phenomenal Korean food experience. And also a huge thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe now for lots more food and travel videos. I'll see you on the next video.